Today we continue to listen Nata Lakna Sutta. First we have to recite Nata Lakna Sutta Pali. Rupa and Vedana question and answer. Number six and seven. <clears throat> Can you follow me? Danke minya ta beka we Rupa ne chawa ne chawa ti Ane chamba ne Yamba na ne cham Do kawa ta su kawa ti Dokambande Yambana Nejan Dokan we bring Namadam Kana Nu dance Manupasi Do Etamama Esamasami Esa me adadi Nohe dambande Vedana ne jawa ne jawa di Ane jabande Yambana ne jam Dokan wa dansu kan wa di Do kan bande yam bana ne jan do kan we bring namadam kan anu dan samnu pasito etam mama eso masami eso me adadi no he dambande. We recite together. Dange minyata vekawe. Ruba ne jawa ane jawa di. Ane jambande. Yambana ne jando kawa dansu kawa di. Do kambande Yambana ne jando kan vibri namadam Kala nu dansam nu basito Etam mama Eso masami Eso me adadi No he dambande Vedana ne jawa ane jawa di ane jawa di Yambana ne jando kawa dansu kawa di Do kawa di Yambana ne jando kawa di namadam Kala nu dansam nu basito Etam mama, eso masami, eso me adadi, no he dambande. Translation we read together. Max, what do you think? Impermanent Veneravesa, that which is impermanent. Is it unsatisfactory dukkha or satisfactory sukha? Unsatisfactory venerabhasa, which is impermanent, unsatisfactory, and subject to change, should it be viewed correctly thus? This is mine, this is I am, it is myself, no venerabhasa. Monks, what do you think? Is Vedana feeling permanent or impermanent? 
Bandera Vesa, that which is impermanent, refractory Doka or satisfactory Sukha. When you practice Vipassana meditation, you gain Vipassana knowledge. That knowledge is the powerful microscope you see to discover the three characteristics of nature, dukkha, and anatta, impermanence, suffering, and no self. <clears throat> Just as a microscope is needed to see the true truth of material properties, Meditator need vipassana knowledge in order to understand the true nature of Nama Rupa, Mind and Meta, the five aggregates, and to see there are three characteristics in nature, dukkha, and nata. <clears throat> One sub commentary said that a person who rightly see rise and fall does not see phenomena manifest in a connected state, but rather in a state of disconnectedness, like iron ducts. Iron ducts are separate one from another. Two meditators who practice vipassana and can see the rise and fall of the aggregates and mental and physical states no longer appear as connected, but are separate and unconnected. So our life goes part by part. They are separate. Once you see this disconnectedness of Nama Rupa, see that they are not continuous, but they are composed of many separate parts. You come to understand that these constantly rising and falling mind my meta process are impermanent. But as long as you think that they are continuous, it is impossible to see their true nature, to see their impermanent nature. So the notion of continuity must be removed. If meditator is to see impermanence and know it to be the characteristics of the aggregates. So to get rid of the notions of continuity, you need to watch present object of mind and matter. You need to see the aggregates arise and disappear. Once the arising and disappearance of aggregates are seen, you will be able to rid yourself of the notions of continuity when this notion is broken, the nature of a nature manifests itself clearly to you. And Dukkha, the characteristics of suffering, does not become apparent because when continuous operation is not given attention, it is concealed by our postures, our iriyapata. As you know, if you sit for some time, <clears throat> you eventually will have pain somewhere. Under normal condition, when you are not meditating, as soon as there is pain, you will change your postures. 
and find a purchase more comfortable. So in daily life, very quick, we do change. But pain eventually comes to that purchase also. So you shift into another purchase and the pain appears there also. So the attempt to avoid pain goes and goes on and on. But we don't like dukkha, we don't like pain. So we change a lot. So pain is temporarily removed by the next purchase you adopt which seem to conceive the nature of dukkha, nature of suffering. Because we keep changing postures, we do not realize that our body is always suffering. We do not sit down long enough to notice that the pain or numbness in our body is constant we do that only when we sit down and we make notes when practicing meditation. So you all meditators are very eager to, 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 to discover the true nature. So you frequently come to the meditation center to discover this nature, true nature. So the changing of cultures conceal the dukkha nature of our physical body. As meditators, after sitting for an hour without changing cultures, you are sure to be suffering pain somewhere, so you know how much suffering there is. When the Wisodi Mega say, pain is concealed by purchase, it means that it is concealed by the purchase taken to remove the pain or suffering of the previous purchase. And it continues. Abhinna Sampati Pilana Manasi Kadwa Iriya Bate Ogadi Ste Doka Lekana Yatawat Sarasato Upatadi. When porches are exposed by attention to continuous oppression, the characteristics of pain becomes apparent in its true nature. Here, Meditator see arising and disappearing. First you understand impermanence, then dwelling or arising and disappearing, arising and disappearing. You find that arising and disappearing is a constant oppression. When your attention is placed on this constant oppression, caused by arising and disappearing, the vultures can no longer conceal the true nature of suffering. So, suffering becomes evident. <clears throat> when a person changes to a more comfortable vultures, he knows that his pain will be gone temporarily. And that if he does not change the vultures again, he will suffer. So in this way, he knows that the pain in any vultures is shifted by substituting another vultures. But if he does not substitute another vultures, the nature of suffering is revealed. So when you do not change purchase, 
but continue sitting in meditation. You will see that, you will see the suffering nature of mind and body, the constant oppression caused by arising and disappearing. So the dukkha that is being concealed by purchase applies only to the physical body, but what about mind? What about our mental states? It is not enough to just to see dukkha in the physical body. It is important that we see dukkha in our mental state also. Here, Pochas cannot conceal dukkha because Pochas have nothing to do with mental states. So, with regard to mental states, the failure to see mind-body process to arise and disappear is that which conceals the Dukkha nature. The nature of Dukkha is constant oppression by arising and disappearing. Only when you see arising and disappearing, you will see the, the Dukkha nature. If you do not see them, you cannot see the true nature of Dukkha. So, failure to see arising and disappearing, maybe that which conceals the characteristics of suffering. So, in regard to mental state, only when you see arising and disappearing, you can see the true Dukkha nature. So during our meditation, we try to be mindful of our thoughts. When a thought comes, pay attention to it, then it disappears along with the attention and is replaced by another thoughts and another moment of attention. So mental states and the mindfulness of those mental states come one after another, arising and disappearing, arising and disappearing. So when you see hundreds of objects arising and disappearing in this way, you can avoid understanding that they are bombarded and oppressed by arising and disappearing. Only when you see the constant oppression caused by arising and disappearing, you really see the dukkha nature of mental states. And only when you understand Dukkha in this sense, constantly oppressed by arising and disappearing, you can understand that all five aggregates of clinging are suffering, all mind and body process are whole mass of suffering. You understand. Now, in Nata Lekna Sutta, Buddha asks the question to the five bhikkhus. Tanke minyata bhikkhui, rupa nechangwa anechangwa ti. Bhikkhus, what do you think? Is material rupa permanent or impermanent? And they replied, rupa is impermanent. Also, the whole day, the whole month, you are observing this Rupa, this Kaya, 
you observe every phenomena occurring at the six and doors. You are waiting at the six and doors. Body door is very wide. Walking, sitting, standing, stretching, bending. You can discover many touching. So you need to answer very sincerely because you are observing this rupa or kaya, the whole meditation section. When noting the feeling or touch that may be felt anywhere in your body, you know the arising of sensation of touch and its disappearance. Rising, falling, despair, you note, walking, left, right, despair, very clear, stretching, despair, bending, despair. So you know the arising and dissolution of the material qualities involved in touch sensation. And you know the arising and passing away of sensitive material qualities of your own body as well as that of the tactile body. So Madhidita realized the freshly arising material bodies are not stable but impermanent because you have seen their incenses arising and passing away by actual noting. Very practical. You wait at the eardrums. You keep your mind inside your inside the ear. You are waiting at the ear door. When you hear something, you take note of hearing. Hearing, you notice the sound wave that is rupa. Sound wave is freshly arising and disappearing. It is knowing the arising and dissolution of sound wave rupa. So the sound wave that arises every time sound is heard is not permanent. Along with these material qualities of sound wave, eardrums also arise afresh and disappear with the sound wave. So once the arising and dissolution of sound wave is perceived, the arising and dissolution of the eardrums is also known. So you take note of sound wave as hearing, hearing every time the sound is heard. You know the impermanent nature of sound wave. You know at the same time the impermanent nature of eardrums as well. And during sitting, you hear something and also traffic sound are generally regarded to be heard as one continuous rash, but meditators whose vipassana inside knowledge has grown strong, those sound waves appear a minute portion, section by section, one after another. So meditator realized the material qualities of sound wave is also arising and perishing at a very fast pace. The whole day you see something, you see many things. Whenever you see, you know, seeing, seeing at a time of seeing an object. But when your vipassana knowledge gets highly developed, the seeing consciousness and seeing the object are first appearing and disappearing. Some yogi report, but 
many yogi report uh, regarding the hearing. But some yogi, they report the seeing process very clearly. The visible form which arises afresh and perish instantly are not permanent. The material quality of sound is eye sensitivity which arise and perish simultaneously with the visible form is also a nature impermanent. Meditators are very patient while eating, stretching, bending, taking, putting the food into the mouth, chewing, and tasting. You know, knowing the taste as knowing, knowing. You know when the taste wishes does appear and disappear. The taste which appears afresh and disappear is impermanent. The impermanent nature of taste is very prominent. However pleasant the taste is, it remains only for a short while on the tongue before it disappears. Delicious taste disappear. Delicious or not delicious, it disappear. Just like the taste, the material qualities of the tongue sensitivity disappear simultaneously. So when the taste is seen to be impermanent, the tongue sensitivity is also seen at the same time to be impermanent. During the practice of meditation, your smelling sensations are very sharp. You keep note of smell. You know that the smell keeps on appearing and disappearing all the time, renewing itself. Smell comes into being and gets dissolved instantly. You know it is impermanent. And the material qualities of the no sensitivity arise and vanish simultaneously with the smell, so they are impermanent. You agree with that? The whole day, you practice very precisely, but thinking interferes. When thinking occurs, while noting the primary objects, rising, falling, sitting, walking, etc., you carefully note it. So it will be observed that the thinking disappear even while it is being noted. Because you are capturing power, getting sharp, and thinking arises, and you capture it very immediately. Every time thinking despair, the material qualities of which thinking is based despair also. The material base arise and vanish with every act of thinking is non. Enduring, it is impermanent. So all these concern with material qualities, which can be stated to be impermanent by the meditators who has realized the knowledge personally by noting constantly the phenomena of aggregates. So these material qualities relate to the whole 
of our body, they arise and dissolve, renewing themselves at every moment of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and thinking. Now you understand your phenomena very well. Just like these material quantities from inside my body, the material qualities from the bodies of other people are also simultaneously arising and vanishing. For instance, noting the sound as hearing, hearing, the material qualities of sound wave is perishing, so also other material qualities in this body as well as those outside in the whole world, whole universe are also disappearing simultaneously. So if you see one, you can infer many things. The whole world are uh, arising and perishing simultaneously. So Buddha asks regarding these material bodies which are impermanent because they are dissolving all the time. And Buddha asks, Rupa nechangwa anechangwati is Rupa permanent or impermanent? And the group of five begus, Kundinya wapa badiya manama and asiji, they had personal knowledge of their impermanent nature. So they sincerely replied, Anecham bande. Rupa is impermanent, blessed one. So Meditator also can answer very sincerely because you are observing Rupa very closely. Is Rupa material body in your body, permanent or impermanent? When asked, you sincerely answer impermanent. Is Rupa in other people's body permanent or impermanent? It is the same, impermanent, impermanent. How about the whole world? Is Rupa in the whole world? Is Rupa in the whole universe permanent or impermanent? Very sure, impermanent. So these are questions concerning the characteristics of a nature, impermanence. When you know the characteristics of impermanence thoroughly, you understand easily the characteristics of Dokka, and another. The characteristics of impermanence is that it does not endure, it does not last. Commentary defines it as Hotwa Abawa Karo, a nature, not being in existence at first. At first there is nothing there, now it's come into being, and then it ceases to exist, it disappear, it dissolve away. These are the characteristics of impermanent. You see in the sky at night, the flash of lightning in the sky, It does not exist before, then it comes into being, signified by a flesh, but it does not last long, it disappears instantly. 
the phenomena of lightning shows all the characteristics of impermanence. Whatever arises afresh to disappear soon is said to have the characteristics of impermanence. So remember what is impermanent, the signs of impermanence, having arisen, mind body cease to exist. That is the signs of impermanence. So we personal meditation is not very easy. Your duty is you keep on noting when seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and knowing. You need to see their true nature. You see these phenomena arising and disappearing. Only when you have acquired this personal knowledge of the characteristics of impermanence is the true knowledge of a nature, nupasana jnana, developed. Seeing dissolution while noting, you know that it is impermanent. This knowledge is the nature nupasana jnana. In order to help develop this jnana, Buddha asked five monks, is rupa permanent or impermanent? And we have fully dealt with this question of impermanence. Now we, sh we go on with the question dealing with the characteristics of Dukkha. What I ask, that which is impermanent, is it satisfactory or unsatisfactory? Buddha asks, and the five bhikkhus answer, that which is impermanent is unsatisfactory, the blessed one. They replied, Dukkha. Two kinds of Dukkha. Suffering or unsatisfactoriness. The first kind, Dukkha, Headache, toothache, etc. So this relates to unbearable pain or suffering. But second kind of dukkha, it is suffering because it is terrible, objectionable, disgusting, and repulsive. The impermanence because of incenses arising and vanishing is not of the painful kinds of suffering. It belongs to the second kinds of second kind in accordance with the commentary definition Payatena Dokkha. It is suffering because it is terrible. The phenomena of insensation arising and perishing is terrible, fearsome. It is, you simply say, it's not good. And the question would ask, that which is impermanent, is it suffering or happiness? Dukkha or Sukha. So it is the same as it is bad or good. And the five monks answer. That which is impermanent is not good. The reason why it is Dukkha, why it is not good, is that it is ever arising and perishing, impermanent, 
and so it is durable. People imagine it to be good because it appears to be enduring, it appears to be stable. But when they realize that it does not endure even a second and is constantly dissolving, they can no longer see any goodness in this mind-body process. We all depend on our existence. We depend for our existence on the five aggregates which are in dissolution all the time. If any moment, if an, any moment the aggregates are not renewed, we die. Which is a terrible thing to know. It is just like living in an old dilapidated building liable to collapse at any time. You may visit for to the for your pilgrimage, some temple are very old, over 1,000 years, etc. In the case of such old building, there is the possibility that it may last for days, months, or even years before coming down. Whereas our mind and body aggregates inside cannot endure even for a second. Now you practically discover whatever you observe, it disappears very immediately. Hearing the sound disappear eardrum disappear, seeing the object, the object disappear, and also eye sensitivity disappear, raising of the food disappear, noting my disappear, you very closely watch this disappearing nature of Rupa. So our Nama Rupa aggregates inside our body, cannot endure even for a second. They are undergoing dissolution all the time and so more durable. So it is termed suffering dukkha. So our mind and body, Namarupa in our body is objectionable undependable, not good at all. It is really dukkha. So need to remember, Namarupa in our body is objectionable, undependable, not good at all. Can you follow me? Namarupa in our body Nama Rupa in our body is objectionable, undependable, not good at all. So mind and body in our body in us are undesirable, objectionable, unreliable, and it is not good at all. It is really dukkha. So what are the characteristics of Dukkha according to the commentaries? Bhena Tampilana Kara Dukkha Lekhana. Insensant, unceasing oppression is the characteristics mark of Dukkha. Here, unceasing oppression means arising and disappearing incessantly of 
aggregates of mind and matter. So all the five aggregates of mind and matter, which are subject to constant rising and perishing, are regarded as dukkha, things which are not good. So remember, operation by insensing origination and dissolution is the characteristic mark of dukkha. So seeing the signs of dukkha by your personal experience and realizing them to be terrible suffering, not good, objectionable, not dependable, it is true. Dukkha Nupasana Jnana. Seeing the rising and passing way of Namarupa while noting and knowing is to be Dukkha, that is Dukkha Nupasana Jnana. So how the Dukkha Nupasana Jnana can be developed? You very patient the whole two months while noting constantly the phenomena of mind and body, starting from rising and falling of the abdomen. You see in the rising and falling, bending, stretching, lifting, stepping, dropping. You see the origination and dissolution taking place incessantly. In the same way, in noting every instance of touching, hearing, seeing, tasting, the origination and dissolution you see clearly, and you begin to see the aggregates of mind and matter being oppressed by process of origination and dissolution. There is possibility of death at any moment. So the operation is seen as a terrible dukkha. It is true dukkha nupasana jnana. The Buddha is very compassionate in order to help develop this jnana. Buddha had asked the five bhikkhus. Yampana Nechan Dokkhanwatan Sukhanwati. That which is impermanent, is it Dokkha or Sukha? Buddha asks. So in the paragraph stating Rupa is not safe, since Rupa is not safe, it tends to affliction. Therefore, it is very plain that. Rupa is terrible suffering, and the five bhikkhus had given the answer. Dokkam Bande, suffering the Blessed One. Having shown in this way that Rupa is nature and Dokkha, body is impermanent and suffering, Bodha went on to ask the five bhikkhus not to regard this rupa as this body is mine. This I am, this is myself. Not to regard this rupa as like this. Yampana nechan dokkan watan sukhan wati dokkan bande. Yampana nechan dokkan vipri namadamam. Kanla nutan samnupasitong. Eta mama iso masmi iso mi atta. That material body which is impermanent, suffering, unsatisfactory, and subject to change, it is proper to regard this body as this body is mine. This I am, this is myself. Buddha asks, and the five bhikkhus answer, 
no hitam bandi, no proper the blessed one. So people clean this body with craving, tana, eta mama. This is mine. So there are three forms of grasping. Eta mama, this is mine, is clinging with tana, craving. Eso hamasmi, this I am, is craving with mana, conceit. Eso me atta, this is my self, is clinging with wrong view. So when a person has taken delight in an object with craving, even if the object does not belong to, to, to himself, it is grasped with craving as if it is his own. So going to the market and seeing delightful objects, and he takes delight in them as if he already owns them. All kinds of jacket, trousers, he fancy, he put them on and the shoes too. He wear them in imagination as if they were his own already. So he grabs at everything, animate or inanimate, as if his own, if he fancy them. So Bodha asks whether it was wise to grasp and take delight as Ittamama, this is mine in things that are impermanent, suffering, and subject to change, meaning whether it is proper to delight in terrible suffering. The material properties, material body in, our, in us are constantly originating and dissolving, constantly arising and disappearing, if you see this phenomena of arising and dissolution as it really is, you would be frightened, just like having to live in the dilapidated building, even though feeling well and all right at the present moment. A change for the worst may take place depending on condition and circumstances, changing very fast. Once it is realized that it is not enduring for even for a moment, always changing. And so, terrible suffering, how could you delight in it? What he choose with great pleasure as his life partner, someone who is going to become a patient within hours or days, or who is going to die very soon? No, no one would take delight in such course of action if he really knows that, if he really knows what is about to happen, in the same way meditators who see the unceasing process of origination and dissolution of the five aggregates, he or she finds only terrible suffering in them, Finding them in this way, Madhidira has no desire to grasp this rupa as Ittamama, this is mine. You have no desire to grasp this rupa as like this. 
So the group of five bhikkhus answered that no hidden bande, it is not proper to regard the rupa as this is mine. So there is an account of the question and answer on how having seen the kaita resist a dukkha, it is not proper to take delight in it as sukha, happiness, something that is good. So that is itamama isomasmi isomi atta tanamana deti. If we do not practice meditation, we do not see these three characteristics and these tanamana uh, deti, craving, conceit, and wrong view can occur. So we will continue this time. We have to stop our discourse for today by practicing vipassana meditation, by observing every phenomena occurring at the six and doors, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting continuously and meticulously. May all yogis be liberated from all suffering. May all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future.